Hello and welcome to the DRL Simulator. Now, if you don't know, DRL stands for Drone Racing League. And that's exactly what it is. It's a drone racing league, I believe, based in America that is trying to or has achieved the mainstream for drone racing or mini quad racing as you and me probably know it as. And this is a free simulator, so I suggest everyone goes and tries it out. Now, you need a fairly decent machine to get this going. The graphics are absolutely stunning. And it took a little bit of time to set it up, but once I got it set up, it was fantastic. Now, I don't mean when it comes to the controller, because that was quite intuitive. But the stock settings that it comes with, just look at the quality of this water. I've never seen water so good in any kind of simulator, maybe GTA 5. Well yeah, it took me a while to get the perfect settings when it came to the camera field of view and also the roll rate, pitch rate, and I used a lot of expo in this actually because I found that the controls weren't quite to my liking. Of course, one thing with the DRL that you might not know is all the quadcopters are the same and they are a 250 spec quadcopter kitted out with so many LEDs but I guess that is so that the cameras can follow them and it makes a pretty good show and I think they've all got the same spec motors, ESCs, flight controller etc and one thing that I noticed with this one is the motors don't rev very high, so I'm assuming they're probably using a fairly low KV motor, or that's just what they have done for this particular simulator. So this particular scenario, I'll go through the entire simulator in a moment, but this one's called Gates of Hell, and I think it's my favorite map of the simulator. It's absolutely huge. Now, the majority of the maps in this simulator are indoors, which means that you can't really do freestyle. But one thing that's good about this simulator is that it offers both freestyle and race scenarios, which I really like. These uh, chimneys here have holes in them, and I think one day I'm going to try and fly down them, but not for this, because that would be a whole other video, I think. But yeah, this racing scenario is based inside here. Let's see if I can get in. Oh, it's very tight. As you can see, it's all flown around these very tight sort of areas, and that doesn't suit me, so I like to fly freestyle around it. Now, a lot of people say to me, which is the best simulator for realism? And it's difficult to say that because they're all set up slightly differently, and I guess it's possible to have any of them set up to fly like your quadcopter and I've got it pretty similar with this one so I'm pretty pleased with that just look at this bridge over here I'm just doing a power loop through the cables trying not to crash yeah really like the graphics of this one and the map is huge you can fly around all this area here which is unlike other simulators one thing that you don't have with this one is video breakup though and it seems that you can fly pretty much all the way around this map without any video breakup or interference so in that sense it is unrealistic but it's just fantastic so we've got a little sort of cave down here let's see if I can fly down here with my not so expertise accuracy that's one thing I found with this simulator more difficult to be accurate when flying around compared to my actual quadcopter now which one of these gaps do I go down? I don't know. Let's just keep flying here and see where it brings me out. Of course, you wouldn't be able to do this with a real quadcopter because you would lose your signal and wouldn't get very far down these tunnels. But it's fun nonetheless. And I have to keep stressing this. It's amazing that this thing is free. I don't know if it's always going to be free. I hope that it is because it's fantastic and the graphics are amazing like I say, but yeah, free for now, so go and get your download while you can. Hopefully the low settings on the graphics should be able to cater for slower machines. This isn't the high spec machine at all, but I can run the graphics on full. This is currently set at medium because I'm screen recording. Check this out, we've got some buildings over here. And we can do some practice dives. <laughs> And I wonder if I can tap the building like they do on that Rotoriot crew. Let's try that out. 
Uh, speaking of Road to Riot, I saw a couple of videos early on of the DRL, there's a YouTube channel for it, and a couple of the Road to Riot guys were in DRL and they seem to not be anymore, I'm not sure what has happened there. I do recognise a couple of the pilots that are in at this though. Anyway, excuse me whilst I just play around with these buildings here. So you know if you can tap off them and you can. That's one thing with this game simulator that is kind of unrealistic and that is the crash physics I guess. It makes it more of a game. You can do some pretty hefty crashes before the thing resets. If you can go down here, oh, oh, oh dear, yes, just about. Yeah, a lot of fun. See if I can go over here. So it looks like we've got another tunnel down here. There's a train track going through this one. Can I squeeze down here? Oh, it's very tight. Oh, dear. A roll as well. I can see myself hitting one of these bars above me here. Oh, can I get down here? It's so tight. Just about. I've set my field of view up to about 120 degrees here. So there's a little bit of distortion, but that is accurate. I think you will agree. Oh, I can't get through here. You can see, oh my goodness, it's blocked off. Where do I go? Oh, I can go down here. Oh, oh this is even worse. <laughs> I think I've got my camera tilt at about 30 degrees here. And oh, it's going so fast down here. What are all these things in the way for? Oh, they need to clear these boxes out. Oh, I can't fly down here very well. This is definitely threading the needle. Oh, there's some pipes there as well. Oh my goodness, this is so long. Where is this going to bring me out? Oh. How have I not crashed yet? Oh dear, oh dear! Where is this? This feels like it's taking me back to that city. So, let's see where it comes out. Oh, it looks like there's a corner ahead. Is this the end? No. Yes! Where's this bringing me out? Oh, on a road. Oh, they should probably block that off to stop people wandering onto the train tracks. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. I could fly around here forever, but that will make a stupidly long video, so... I wonder if I can land on the top of one of these buildings so we can go and check out the rest of the simulator. Let's try and do that. There we go. So this is the main screen and the first thing that I want to point out is the maps. So if we go into the maps here, when you first download this game, simulator, whatever you want to call it, you have to download these maps individually and this took about 40 minutes to do for me, and every time each one of these finished downloaded, it absolutely crashed the system for about 30 seconds, so I'm not sure what that is about. Anyway, yes, you have to individually download these, so if we go back here, we have various different options. So we have this training thing here, and it's a course that you can go through to help you become a better pilot in the DRL simulator and then if we go back here we have got single player and you have the option to do freestyle or race which is nice and then if we go back here we have multiplayer and you can select your region here as well again I haven't seemed to have found a session running so I don't know what that's about but I guess you would do join lobby here and then it says connecting I imagine that something will come down here but there's nothing there at the moment so I'm just gonna go back here and then you can see here DRL tryouts now this it says has ended but supposedly they're using this simulator to qualify to enter the real DRL so I think that's really interesting. I think it shows that they have a lot of faith in this simulator. And then we have a leaderboard here, and you can view various leaderboards and things. So if we go into here, you've got each different one, and then the fastest time, etc. I am not going to be on here at all, somewhere at the bottom. <laughs> We just exit there, so that's pretty cool. A bit like FPV event where you can go on their website and view all of the leaderboards, etc. And then if we go into here, you have to create a profile. So if we go into here, then this is all my profile things. You get 
these things here props and it's not actual props when i first saw this i thought oh you're only given so many props and then you're gonna have to buy props etc luckily that is not the case and this just basically means you know props is kind of like you know sort of your level or whatever 61 crashes oh dear <laughs> Flight time, 1 hour 52, so this is what I have currently put on it. You'd think I would have less crashes for that. And you can change all sorts of info here and log off, etc. Of course, mine's Andy RC. So if I go back here, and then if we go into settings, we have graphic settings, and I have got this set to medium because I'm screen recording, but I have no problem setting this to high. I'm using a fairly probably a mid-range system this is a GTX 970 with an AMD FX 8320 processor so not the highest spec but it runs this fine when I'm not screen recording and you don't have many settings here you can't change individual settings which I kind of like so then if we go on to exit there we have got control it now I thought this was interesting if I go on to here and select create new got various different presets here and of course I chose the Tyrannus for mine for any USB controller is going to work so if you get one of those all-in-one dongles and plug it into the back of your favorite transmitter you can calibrate it I found it pretty easy one thing that I didn't like is you can't seem to go in and edit it once you have created it which is a bit of a pain but it walks you through it anyways it talks you through which axis to move and then you can change it for your various mode etc I won't go through that otherwise I make the video too long and then if we go into audio settings here you can turn the music off which I have done I'm not sure if it's copyrighted music so I have to be careful for that on YouTube and then we have drone settings here as well and you can see you've got the various presets at the top here and your camera tilt your field of view and your RC rate and your degrees per second roll rate pitch rate and your rate and got expo here as well now these don't seem to correlate to beta flight and there's no PID settings so you're kind of stuck with the way that it flies uh, and then if we come down here, you can change the drone mass. Now, it's set at 800 grams, which is a bit too heavy. Usually, it sits about 600, maybe 590 or something like that. And you can change the motor power as well. Why not have that on full? So, I have done that. So, if we exit there. Settings are pretty straightforward, I think. So, without further ado, let's go do some flying. So, if I go into single player here, and then race, uh, we have all of these various different selections. So, let's go and check out Gates of Hell. Now, there's quite a little bit of loading time involved with this, I have found. And here we have pilots that we can race against you can set the difficulty I'm just gonna select it as easy here because I'm a newbie when it comes to this and I really don't enjoy racing like in really tight spaces and this simulator focuses on that or should I say the DRL tracks to focus on that so you can select them all here now, I do recognize a couple of these pilots Johnny and this chap here I've seen in various races but not sure about the other guys so then we can start game there are some beautiful introductions on this simulator okay let's go for a race and I'm gonna stay behind so that you can see all the other quadcopters fly in front of me so you can see what you are racing against but I do have this on the easy setting so I'm gonna fly forward in front of them oh my goodness I do not make a good loser okay look how tight this is down here now, I don't know if you can notice, but the quadcopter seems to be flashing in and out of shot in the bottom corners there. I will notify you when it does it there, you can see. And we also have this guide around the track as well, which I'm kind of grateful for. And we have sort of a green 
diamond as well, showing us where the next gate is, which I'm also grateful for because I don't know these courses at all, but I believe they are accurate courses. Now, this is a difficult part of the track to fly under here, and I have to fly so slowly, and it's so hard not to crash down here, which I find quite frustrating. Well, that's my personal issue, you know. These are scenarios that they are racing in on the DRL. You can see, quite annoying that. I think that's probably my graphics card playing up, maybe. Maybe I need to update the drivers, but yeah, the arms of the quadcopter just flashing in and out of shot there. So I think I am very far ahead of these other quadcopters. Perhaps I should have put it on medium, but as I say, I don't like to lose. Terrible at that. One of the reasons why I don't turn up to these race events is I go in a huff when I don't win. <laughs> okay, so I think this is the last section. Just two laps on this one, thank goodness. And we fly in here, and that's the end of the race. And we get a shot, a rare shot, of the outside of the quadcopter here. And I can go over here and press the other pilot and I can see where they are still at as well. I wish you could do this in other areas of the game, such as freestyle, because the graphics on these things are absolutely fantastic. But you can't do that, so I'm going to have to watch these other pilots fly around, and that is pretty cool. You can only do that after you have finished your race, and of course if we select the camera here, we can flip between their FPV camera and also the outside as well. Each of these quadcopters has got a different set of LEDs. Oh, it looks like he missed that gate there. That's something that I would probably do. <laughs> but yeah, this is pretty cool. I think you'll agree for a free simulator. Pretty amazing. Oh, he's crashed! And he's done a bad crash. But somehow he has managed to recover. So, hmm, yeah, maybe they need to work on the crash physics there. I don't know. Or they're going for a sort of arcadey sort of game style thing rather than a realistic crash physics there. But anyways, look at this, just cool, going through all the different views, etc. And I think if I press escape, then I can... Oh, I'm not sure what's happening there. <laughs> there we go. And it shows that I won. Yes, I win. So that shows the leaderboard there, and we can exit out of there. So when it comes to freestyle, there's only a couple of tracks I really like, because a lot of them are set indoors, so you can't sort of do big punch outs etc so this one's indoors this one's indoors and I think this one's indoors as well so I think that it'll be Miami Lights that is the only one other than Gates of Hell that is set outdoors all the rest are in very sort of tight spots but I will have quick looks at them but this one which is the one I opened the video with, Gates of Hell and Miami Lights, is a pretty cool scenario as well. So let's check that out. So you can see when it starts up here, it starts recording the flight at the bottom, and that is just for a replay. It's not like screen recording it. You can press the space bar to stop that, and let's go flying. Uh, I like this scenario. The graphics are silky smooth. I don't like that you can't change the angle so that you can see the quadcopter from the outside. I think that would have been a nice touch and there's no line of sight support with this as far as I can see. This is a big map. So this is one of the races that DRL set up but this is just like without any of the gates or anything and you can fly around all of these sort of corridors etc and if you have followed some of the DRL then you'll notice this I think they call it the helix or something like that lots of cars and stuff down here all the same make and model so just come around here and mess around do a bit of freestyle I like it for that I find that the race track for this one is really tight and quite frustrating. I always end up crashing, but there you go. <laughs> great for freestyle though and great for practicing if you are a newbie with it being a free bit of software. What I will say though when it comes to the controls is you have to play around a lot with the settings. The 
RC rate and also, you know, how quick it rolls, etc. Because I found that the settings that it comes with, the controls are quite woolly and it's not very snappy and the quad drifts around a lot. And I know you're probably thinking, stop complaining, it's free. But yeah, it's free, but, you know, you don't want it to be giving out bad training advice, you know, even if it's free, but actually it's not doing that. I just found that it took a little bit of setup compared to the other sims out there and it's pretty good. And of course the DRL as well, they have their sort of standardized quadcopters as well. So there's nothing to say that they have not modeled it on those which in general are 250 size quadcopters. So a little bigger than we have now really. Probably the biggest that we go these days is 230 now. 250s old school. <laughs> yeah, I like this scenario though. Good for freestyle. Uh, the one thing I will say is that the sort of crash physics are pretty unrealistic, which makes it kind of like a game. So if I sort of just crash into the wall there, you can see it just lets me continue flying. We don't have any broken props. You can see I just smash into stuff. Maybe they're using DAL props, I don't know. <laughs> it does eventually crash to the point where you have to reset it. And there you go. That is that scenario. And then we can exit the game here because we have all of our options here as well, which we can change. There's not many. You see, space starts the recording. You've got chat on here as well. I guess that's for your multiplayer. And. RC overlay, so I guess you can have the sticks on there as well if you like. Race reset, so that just resets the scenario, so I can do that. There's set it up on a switch, and you can reset it. So let's check out another scenario. So this scenario is called LA Apocalypse, and I'll just stop the recording there because it messes with the screen recorders frames per second. Yeah, this one I guess is sort of like a closed down shopping mall or shopping center as I would call it and it's not that interesting of a scenario for freestyle I imagine that when they have got the uh, race gates up or whatever it's more interesting but not really for freestyle just a lot of these bollards and gaps in the floor and you can't go outside in this one so based in Los Angeles of course and I guess this is a real place I imagine and if it's part of the DRL series then I'd say it's probably a real place if I can uh, if I can hit the ceiling oh no <laughs> Let's try that again. I want to uh, do one of those. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's why I don't like flying inside. <laughs> Not with a brushless model anyway, of course. I think if you had a brush model around here, that would be a heap of fun. I think I bounced off this, the, uh, the roof then. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. That doesn't work as I thought it would. <laughs> ah! It's skipping around. Yeah, it does let you bounce off the roof. Okay, next scenario. This one is called Project Manhattan and we are indoors again. Uh, I'm not sure what you would call this. Is it like a shopping center again? I don't know. Boom! You can play with the ceiling a little bit more with this one, which is pretty cool, but it's not actually a huge map, this one. Ah, there's the ground. Oh, there's a sort of race gate in here that you can play with. <laughs> you could sort of practice trying to hit stuff with this one. That's quite cool, but other than that, not a lot of stuff going on with this one. 
In fact, I don't think you can actually go out here, can you? Oh, yes, you can. There you go. What have we got down there? Mm, stairs that go to nowhere, is it? Yes. And I don't think we can go outside. No. <laughs> Oh, where's it put me? There we go. Oh, outside there looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I wish we could go out there. So this is the last scenario, and it looks like a crashed alien spacecraft, and I think we're indoors again. So let's press space, I'll stop the recording at the bottom there, and let's see what's about. Uh, there's our litter. That looks pretty cool. I think you will agree. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else really in here. Let's have a fly about. Again, I don't think we can get outside. What's that over there? Some blue lights. Is it anything? Just some neon lights, I guess. Ooh. What is this? Oh, this is making my eyes go funny. Where's that light coming from? Something down here? Oh, that's a that's a track. Can I come down here? I don't think so. It's shut up. Show where all these lights are coming from. There you go. Oh, there's not a lot you can do indoors when it comes to freestyle. So I think I'm going to leave it there. So there you go. That is my review of the DRL simulator. I'll put links in the description if you wish to try it. It's free, so why not? As always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.